Good evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, I'm very fortunate today to have a guest that has agreed to talk to, um, has to uh, that visits with us, and we're going to talk about mental illness. Um, I'm in the third season, and it has taken just that long to be able to uh, invite a guest that is willing to share some of her stories with you and me, and maybe we can find some solutions for all of us. So I'm just very, very honored uh, to introduce to you today Mona. How are you, Mona? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. I usually tell the friends how we met. Oh, um, well, I recently moved to the trailer park on April 1st mm -hmm. of last year. And um, after getting a settlement from SDI for $34,000. And I was able to take $5,000 from that um, award that I received. And um, I just bought the trailer. And so I know that not very many people smoke in that trailer, but I was feeding for a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And I knew that you smoked, but I didn't know where you lived. Yeah. But I was just scamming the, um, the, the trailers, and I came on to your place. And then when I saw the sign, it says something about, oh, she smokes good. Good, <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's how we met, and uh, we, we, got, we got to talking. And uh, so one of the things we was discussing that how people's circumstances change sometimes. And so we've spent a few hours together here in the last few weeks. And, um, and that's when you agreed to kind of visit with me a little bit about this. And I understand that uh, it, well, it was a paralegal. Yeah, it was a paralegal. Mm -hmm. I worked, see, when you're a paralegal, burnout is three years. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. But um, I worked for five. Mm -hmm. And um, the la and the last job that I had, I used to work for the Los Angeles County of Criminal Courts. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, got sick. Mm -hmm. I don't want to explain the circumstances. All I know is that um, people frighten me mm -hmm. because they're very judgmental there and I was trying to get hired on as a permanent paralegal there mm -hmm. but I couldn't mm -hmm. I went through the motions and stuff they were gonna hire me but something happened mm -hmm. like I said that caused me to suffer from paranoid schizophrenia now yeah so something just totally flipped your life around yes mm -hmm. and it is you that picked the uh, the title uh, root awakening yes it mm -hmm. was a root awakening because um, it made me look at myself more. And um, I had anxiety attacks. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that I was lying at first because um, I'm not one of those people that go around and, and just um, walk around and say, duh, 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 you know. Yeah, that's a good point because a lot of times people think, when, there is a, when we have a mental illness that we're supposed to be different some kind of way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as it turned out, it was not very noticeable for a long time, huh? Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't very noticeable. As a matter of fact, when I first got ho hospitalized, my brother took me to, um, I forget the name of the hospital. It's been so long ago. I was sick in 1989. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember the exact date, 929. Mm -hmm. 1989, and um, when I first went to the hospital, they wouldn't take me because um, I wasn't a, a danger to myself. Mm -hmm. So the second time they took me, which was in October of 1989, um, they said, well, are you going to hurt yourself? And I said, yes. See, after I quit my job, after the people scared me there, um, I took off in my car and um, rode four down four different freeways. Oh my goodness. I thought they were chasing me. Aye. And then the, and then I, the person that I got um, sick with, mm -hmm. the person that scared yeah. me, I used to call him 2020, and then I saw a license plate going down the street saying 2020. That's what set you off. Yeah, yeah. that's what set me off, and I got scared. And, and so that, in their opinion, then made you a danger to yourself and others. 
Yes, I did. Yeah. I was driving real fast on the freeway. Mm -hmm. and um, But I never thought of hurting myself. In 1990, no, in 1992, I almost took an overdose of pills, but then I heard my, I heard my roommate's phone ring. Mm -hmm. And that told me that they were trying to get a hold of him to tell me not to do, not to do it. Yeah. And so, but some kind of way you've learned with a lot of therapy. Um, oh, how, you, yes. How many times were you in the hospital? I was in the hospital about, I could tell you the dates. Let's see. I'll start first. Um, I was in Harbor Medical Center. That's the name of the hospital. In 1989 for about a couple of weeks. Then I went to Metro. Then I went to... Um, Let's see. It's been so long. That's okay. We really don't have to remember. I just wanted the number okay. of times that you were hospitalized. Um, oh, I was. Let's see. Harvard Medical Center. Metro. Um, Penmar. Uh, TLC, TRC. I would say about about seven times. Seven times, yeah. And and so during during that time period, I it, it it sounds like you got some very valuable tools, you know, ways that you could uh, cope the hospitals, with things. The hospitals weren't that good. No. No. I got there when I I got the most help when I was seeing counselors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's sort of where I was going. I was going to talk about, oh, okay. you know, it, it took that many times to be hospitalized before you finally got somewhere where somebody gave you some real help, you know. Right. Yeah. And and then that that worked out for you. Okay, did uh, did you, um, it, it, did they know what was wrong with you right away or did they give you the runaround like they do so many people? They give a lot of people the runaround yes, because they, they misdiagnose a lot of illnesses. And that's why I ask you that. Did, did you run into that same problem? I was in danger mm -hmm. in those hospitals because I spoke my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm more docile now. Mm -hmm. But I still get into fights with my friends sometimes when there's an injustice. Mm -hmm. But I'm slow to, I'm slow to anger. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to have an anger problem mm -hmm. when I was growing up. In fact, um, see, my, my diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia usually surfaces um, when you're 17, mm -hmm. in your teenage years. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it till late in life. Mm -hmm. So I was a late bloomer. A late bloomer, yeah. Yeah, Wonderful, yeah. late bloomer in my own sickness. So yeah. anyways, um, I uh, learned that um, from these counselors, that I wasn't such a bad person. I went through, well, I had a relationship that I was involved in for about three years, eight months with a guy. I won't mention his name. That's okay, we don't want, we don't want names today. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I w used to go to hypnotherapy mm -hmm. and that helped a lot to see that I was a great person. I remember that. Mm -hmm. But um, at the time, it didn't help because I was so stubborn. Mm -hmm. I'm a very stubborn person. If I don't get my way, mm -hmm. then I um, I don't lash out. I do other things. Mm -hmm. I smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. And by the way, many people in the mental health system drink, smoke cigarettes and drink coffee, just like AA, NA, mm -hmm. and all those other organizations, except mm -hmm. for Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. they don't smoke. And I had to go to one, and I walked out, and I went home. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm getting away from the subject here. Um, I, I don't want to interrupt you. That's why I'm, I'm, so, okay. I'm so quiet over here. But OK, now, so you went to hypnotherapy, and that helped you. My original question was, did they know what was wrong with you right away? Or did it take a, a whole lot of time? Because a lot of times they misdiagnose things. 
You see, I, I've been in... Um, I, no, I, they I, they I go diagnosed me right away. Right away. Mm -hmm. But later on, they tried to say that I was a manic depressive. Mm -hmm. That's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, they tried to put me on lithium, but I wouldn't go because I don't want the blood draws. Mm -hmm. See, when I first got ill, I had to have a lot of blood draws because um, I became frantic of my health. Mm -hmm. I thought I had cancer, but maybe the drugs that I had cured the cancer. They don't mm -hmm. know yet. Mm -hmm. But I think they did. Mm -hmm. And um, and I had a love draws, and so my veins in my arms are kind of um, weak. Mm -hmm. So I have to draw from my hand now. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go through that again. Mm -hmm. But they, they diagnosed me right, pretty quickly, right away, right because down. I was scared. Mm -hmm. And I was changing. Mm -hmm. Schizophrenia means change. Mm -hmm. And um, I was changing a lot. Mm -hmm. For the worst sometimes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a picnic. Yeah. Now, the, um, I, I, like I said, uh, you know, I've known you for some time now, and we, we always go, cool. we can always kick things back around. We go do things and things like that. And one of the things I asked, we talked about yesterday is, you know, when, when, when there is an episode, what do, you, what do we want people to be? Do you remember what you said? Yes, we want people to be cordial. That's the word. I really like that word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cordial, um, friendly, um, understanding, mm -hmm. and um, not necessarily loving because, um, but I wish that would be the case if we had more love. That would be great. Be great, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people are judgmental. They're afraid of the illness. Mm -hmm. They're afraid that. Um, that some of it might rub off on them. Mm -hmm. They can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Even my friends, I have some friends that I go visit regularly on a regular basis. They live a few, they, by, I bike a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, by um, 20 minutes I can get there. And um, when I act crazy, they get mad mm -hmm. because uh, they're afraid. Mm -hmm. They don't know. So, do we have a different word for crazy? Um, because confused. I, yeah, I act. I'm crazy. I act crazy all the time. <laughs> so they couldn't tell the difference. They couldn't tell the difference whether I'm well or not. You know, because I had some bouts with mental illness myself. You know. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, like yeah, you talked so about. That's why I'm so happy that you came and agreed to do that because uh, I had asked my therapist, would he be nice enough to find somebody for me, and he in the three seasons wasn't able to do that. Oh. So, so I really appreciate you, you know, you're talking to me. Now, um, so is schizophrenia, and I really don't know anything about it, is it hereditary or is it uh, like my problem was caused by, uh, by trauma? Uh, it was caused by post-traumatic stress syndrome and then um, it does, that doesn't come in the same category, does it? Uh. It's a chemical imbalance. It's a chemical imbalance, and it just happens one day. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when it's...